Good afternoon. The death toll from the Indonesian tsunami has more than doubled overnight, with more than 800 people now known to have died. The country's vice president has warned the final toll could run into thousands. A 7.5 magnitude earthquake off the coast of Sulawesi Island triggered a tsunami with waves of up to six metres. Caroline Davies reports. From above, the true impact of this earthquake starts to become clear. Homes crumpled and swept away, a bridge collapsed and submerged. This was a shopping centre, now buckled and bent. Mia and her daughters were inside when the earthquake hit. Suddenly everything got dark and the walls started falling around us. It was horrible. So I rushed to the broken escalator with all my daughters and we made it to the outside and we were safe. The earthquake also triggered a tsunami. Waves six metres high crashed into the city of Palu, where hundreds of people had gathered for a beach festival. Rescue teams are struggling against power outages, broken roads and damaged communication networks. The airport has now reopened. Shaken and injured, some were evacuated by the military, bandaged and taken to the province's capital. Many others were left in Palu. Some have turned to looting. There has been no aid. We need to eat. We don't have any other choice. We must get food. The president of Indonesia visited Palu and saw the damage for himself. The search is now on for survivors. This was once a hotel, but rescuers are now pulling bodies from the rubble. More than 800 people are now known to be dead, but the authorities still haven't reached the epicentre of the earthquake, so that total is likely to rise. Caroline Davis, BBC News. The number confirmed dead following Friday's earthquake and tsunami in Indonesia has increased dramatically with rescue workers warning it could rise further still. The country's disaster agency says at least 832 people have died, but with several areas still cut off, the full scale of the disaster is unclear. The quake struck the island of Sulawesi, triggering a tsunami which has left a scene of devastation in the city of Palu. Rescue teams are struggling to reach other coastal towns as roads and communication networks have been destroyed. Dan Rivers has the latest. Visible as a faint line of foam on the horizon, the man filming from the top of a car park knew immediately what it meant. <laughs> He tried to warn those below, oblivious to the approaching wall of water. Cars are still driving along the beachside road as the first mighty wave hits. People stumble as they scramble from the rising sea, leaping for their lives. Then a second wave roars in with unstoppable momentum those watching panicking as it engulfs everything. The damage wrought not just by the speed, but also by the volume of water, exerting the power of an entire ocean on the low-lying city of Palu. It severed the bridge over the river and has eviscerated large swathes of homes and businesses. The death toll is already in the hundreds and is likely to rise further. After so many have lost so much, there have been some outbreaks of looting as people try to survive in a city without power, order or communications. The army have been helping to recover survivors, here pulling a man alive from the rubble of a partially collapsed mosque. But in many places this is now an operation to recover the dead, not the living. Indonesia's president this morning flew to Palo to oversee the aid effort. Once again, Indonesians are contending with the consequences of living on an active fault line known as the Ring of Fire. They know the risks of such seismic events here, but just before this tsunami hit, the warnings had been lifted, a mistake which may have cost hundreds of lives. Dan Rivers, ITV News.